Hello, welcome back to Poor Patrick's Almanac. Today we're going to discuss something that I like to call the generational dilemma. We hear an awful lot now about political strife and capitalism versus socialism, and um, that's very predominant on college campuses and with young people, and they might not have the historical frame of reference that this is really a generational occurrence. Uh, back in the roaring 20s, in the 1920s that is, there was great opulence in this country. Uh, manufacturing was running rampant. We just devised uh, the assembly line. Factories were, were working overtime. There were a lot of jobs, a lot of productivity, and people were very much um, getting into the capitalist system. They wanted to invest and take part in the markets. Uh, we had a very buoyant uh, stock market and equities market as people wanted to buy shares and participate in the wealth. Uh, the Roaring Twenties, of course, um, came into the Depression era of the 1930s, and uh, a lot of people who were disenfranchised and felt that capitalism betrayed them were very, very active in a push for socialism here in America. The Socialist Party was very, very popular for quite a, no a number of years in the 1930s, and it really gained some traction. Uh, then we had World War II and the post-war expansion. Uh, once again, we were building out the nation's infrastructure, and there was an incredible amount of manufacturing, and uh, there were a lot of new innovations, and people really, once again, got enamored with capitalism. And that led us up to the 1960s. So now we're in the late 60s, early 70s, when you had another move towards socialism in this country. There was a lot of people looking even to live a communal lifestyle or to drop out, so to speak, of society. And socialism, again, was rampant. So we're going in about 50-year cycles, uh, the late 20s to the mid-30s, and then the late 60s through the mid-70s. And then, of course, came the 80s and the 90s with a lot of technological innovation and incredible amounts of capitalism. We heard the stories of people who used to be in radical groups such as the Weathermen and the Black Panthers now working on Wall Street or working for hedge funds. So things really changed dramatically in those few decades. Which brings us now to the late 20 teens and early 2020s, which is another 50 year cycle where once again we see the disenfranchised in America who may have been left behind by capitalism, once again striving for a socialist platform. Uh, it's very, very difficult to put a rationale on that behavior. It's easy to say that the people just lack the educational skills or the expertise to excel in the free market capitalist society, but there are other underlying factors as well. But if you notice the pattern here, roughly every 50 years or so, when the next generation of people realize that their life might not be better than their parents' generation, they have uh, kind of an economic revolt and they're drawn towards socialism. But the rubber band is very elastic and it snaps back to capitalism, uh, at least up until this point. Uh, there may be a breaking point of that rubber band, so to speak, but if you look at the 50-year trends going back for the last 100 to 150 years, every time the younger generation tries to make its way in the world, there's resentment against the generation before them that achieved material wealth through capitalism, and we get a big outcry for a socialist agenda. So it's very interesting to put it into historical context. It's definitely nothing new what is going on right now in America. 
And it's uh, up until this point, it's important to remember that uh, we always come back to free markets and capitalism, which was the founding and underlying identity of the United States of America. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. I will try to keep you informed and also present a number of interesting little, oh, let's call them slideshows or videos now just to kind of reminisce a little bit along the way. Thanks again. We will see you soon.